So it's a heat wave and you're trying to work on your Raspberry Pi project and it's getting a little bit toasty. So you think to yourself, how can I cool it down? Put some heat sinks on it? How about oil cooling? So at the moment I've got the Pi set up with uh, no heat sinks and we're just seeing what the idle temperatures are. Just gonna... That's already pretty hot just to the touch. If we look at the temperatures being monitored from it over here, it's sitting at about 50 to 51 degrees, maybe just a bit more. And that's with it just sat on the desktop, not really doing a lot. So now what we're gonna do is run a benchmark of Quake 3 on it for one hour and see how the temperatures are after an hour. Uh, and it's quite a hot day out, so yeah. Should be interesting to see how it goes. There we go, we'll just let that run as it is for an hour. So here we are, an hour later. Still running Quake 3 nice and smoothly. To the touch, it's, yep, that's quite hot to the touch. And if we look at the actual temperature, it's set at uh, 67 degrees. Uh, around 68 degrees, I'd say. So with that first benchmark done, it's now time to try it with some heat sinks. So I've got the heat sinks on now, which look quite aesthetically pleasing. Again, still quite warm to the touch, and it's running, interestingly, about the same as it was without any heat sinks at idle. So let's again load up some Quake 3 and uh, leave that going for an hour and see how it runs with the heat sinks on. Okay, so it's been running for an hour now on heat sinks and to the touch, it's ow, absolutely roasting. And interestingly, looking at the temps, it's 70 degrees coming up to 71 degrees, which is actually higher than it was without the heat sinks, which is interesting. I'm not quite sure how that's happened. Maybe the heat sinks are terrible. I did just randomly buy them off eBay, so that's entirely possible. Um, so maybe they're not dissipating the heat that much. I don't think the temperature's gotten hotter because it's later on in the afternoon. So I don't know, interesting. All right, now it's time for the really fun bit. Putting some oil in here, bring the pie in, and then we're gonna see how it goes. This crucial HDMI cable, put that in there. And I'm gonna get to my sacrificial power supply. Put that in here. Happy dirty. And I'm gonna try and make sure that the the system on a chip is submersed in the oil, but I want the Ethernet and USB ports facing out so that I can plug the Ethernet in without ruining an Ethernet cable, and so I can plug the mouse and keyboard in without ruining cables for them. I guess I should just start pouring this in. I don't even know if this is going to work or whether this is going to completely break the pie. So it could be that this completely breaks it and it doesn't work again. So and this is a brand new <laughs> Raspberry Pi 3B plus, so that'd be funny. Okay, don't think about it. This doesn't feel right at all. There's a little crack on the side of this. Don't know if that's gonna leak or not. Doesn't look like it's gonna leak. I'm going to tape that up because I think that might leak. Make it go a bit. <laughs> it's that moment where you just realise what you're doing. And it's stupid. That's taped up nicely. That's completely just to keep pouring, keep pouring. Okay, and the pie is in. Let's get this 
plugged in and get benchmarking. Okie dokie, so I want to get this in real time. It's nice and submersed in there. Now the main part is the system on a chip that we want in the oil, so that's the most important part to be in the oil. Uh, so we're plugged into the monitor, the network, everything else. So let's go ahead and plug this into the mains. <laughs> See if it blows up. Here we go, it's in. It's, it's on. It's on. I can see a red light. Green light. It's booting. Hey! It's not blown up. It's a positive start. Alright, we're in. So I'm sat on idle for a while now, and it is. It's running about 36, 37 degrees. Seems to have kind of settled out at 36 knots. Five, I think about 15 degrees drop from idle before, so that's looking good. Now of course it's time to run in Quake 3. There we go. It's officially an oil cooled Raspberry Pi running Quake 3. Let's see what the initial temperatures are. Okay, so if it stays around that then that's... That's not bad, so we'll leave that. We'll leave that for an hour and then come back and then see see how it's going. See if it's still working. Okie dokie, so here we are. About one hour later. And Quake is still running perfectly fine. Raspberry Pi feels pretty cool on air. Even the sides and these metal bits were feeling quite hot. Whereas now they feel a lot cooler. Um I'm gonna go in the oil. Yeah, you can really tell the oil around it is a lot cooler. I think if there was a fan in there moving the oil around, that would keep it even cooler. So let's see what the temperatures are. Okay, so just looking at the temperatures here, it's sitting around 48.5 average now. Um, so that's pretty good. That's knocked, uh, knocked it down from 70.9 degrees. So that's quite effective. That's like 20 degrees plus. So yeah, oil cooling definitely works. Okay, so we have some pretty interesting results here. So on idle with no heat sinks, it was 51.5 degrees. One hour on Quake 3 with no heat sinks, 68.8 degrees. Uh, with heat sinks, same idle temperature. Interestingly, the uh, one hour on Quake 3 temperature went up to 70.9 degrees. So it's a couple of degrees higher than without heat sinks could be a little weird ambient temperature thing. Um, but with the oil and the heat sinks, it's dropped massively in idle down to 36.5. So that's a good uh, 15 degrees there. And down to 48.5 degrees uh, after an hour on Quake 3. So that's down by about 20, 20 degrees, which is pretty good. And while I was testing I moved the pie around in the oil a bit and that actually affected the temperature more it lowered it so I think if there was a way to move the oil round in here to get fresh oil going over the heat sinks it would actually cool it down a lot more. The real key is the fact that I want to use this pie for another project so what I want to do is take this pie out of here, drain the mineral, mineral Drain the vegetable oil and then um, actually wash the pie. Full on put it in a sink, wash it over, dry it off, and then see if it will work afterwards. So we'll, this will be a testament to the build quality of the Raspberry Pi. We'll see if it can survive being oil cooled, then washed, then dried, and then booted again. Okay, so here we are in the kitchen. Just gonna drain out the oil. Oh boy. The first thing to do will be to pour the cooking oil back into its sauce bottle. Because you don't want to pour this stuff down the drain, as I've just Googled, because it can uh, go very wrong. Um, oh god, it's going everywhere. And the pie is now free from the oil. Let's get the remainder of this oil back in here. Oh, 
do is, is find a way to recycle this. Um, and then there we go. That's the little dealt with. Now it's time for the really fun part, which will be cleaning the Raspberry Pi itself. I'm literally just gonna pour some water in there. Oh, that oil was really stuck on there, so. Now, get some fairy liquid in there. Other brands are available. All right, here we go. I really don't know if this is going to survive this. So that's the SD card free and looks reasonably non-oily, so that's okay. Seems the oil has actually come off. I was very worried it wouldn't. All right, let's give it a little preliminary dry. Probably not ESD safe, but let's not worry about that too much. Doesn't look, I don't know how well the camera gets that, but it doesn't look too oily anymore. Let's give it a bit more washing up liquid. And a bit more hot water. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and put it on my windowsill. And hopefully that should dry relatively fast in the sun and then we'll give it a boot and see if it still runs. So it's been drying for a little while now and it looks pretty good. Um, so what I'm going to do is plug it back in and see if it works. Don't know whether it works yet or not. Oh boy. And go! Okay, the power lights are on. Oh, I've forgotten to put the SD card in, so let's put the SD card in. That's a good start so far. And on for activity. And there we go. There we go, still works. And there we go, still runs absolutely fine after being dunked in oil and then washed. Just noticed while I was trying to do some filming that the Pi has started rebooting itself. Uh, so let's power off. Power back on. Uh oh. Thinking maybe the SD card got corrupted. Hmm, let's try out the signal, but it's not doing it. Let's find another working SD card. So it seems that even with another SD card in there, it's still just sat there. Green and red LEDs on, not loading anything. Appears to be partially booting. I've tested the SD card on another Pi, so I know that's not the corrupted element here. Um, but it appears to be stuck in a boot loop, I think, because it keeps switching the monitor on and switching it back off again. As you can see there, it's gone blue, which means it's trying to put a signal through it back to orange. And I have seen the startup appear, like the three little raspberries that appear along there, but it doesn't appear to fully boot up for some reason. Okay, I've dried, dried up some of the ports a bit and the ACT LED is looking a bit dim. Uh, fortunately, no, that doesn't look right. But it ran okay for a while. And then something may have shorted out or perhaps uh, the system on a chip. Oh, actually, hmm, I'm not sure. I'd have thought it would shorted out straight away if there was water under the actual heat spreader. Oh, it booted for a second. It did something. Okay, so, okay, it still works. It still works. Um, not sure what's going on there. It may need a bit more drying, but in general, 
that still works. I think I'm just gonna, oh, it's just gone off again. I have a feeling that either the heat spread has been damaged and isn't spreading the heat from the SOC, so it's overheating and shutting off, or there's still some liquid under there somewhere that's causing it to short out. So oil cooling a Raspberry Pi, you can do it. It does work. It does seem to knock the temperatures down a great deal, but in terms of washing it all up, getting the oil off, um, it can potentially damage the Raspberry Pi as we've seen there. It did boot up and run Quake 3 for a while. Did manage to get it to boot again, as you've seen, but I think either some water still left on it, so I'm gonna leave it to dry for another week, see if that's salvageable, or while I was drying it with not exactly statically safe methods, I imagine it may have sh uh, caused some electrostatic damage to a component on it or something, but we'll see. But in general, I think if you could get a decent case and some decent mineral oil that you knew was gonna last a while and dunk a pie in it or a number of pies that were doing a lot of work, it could, it could have its uses, but I'd probably recommend probably just using a decent set of heat sinks and maybe a fan if you need to. I will do a follow-up video in a week, I reckon, to see how well the pie has done after it's been fully dry for a week, because by then, I imagine there's some water under the uh, heat spreader on the CPU, and that could be causing it to short out. So hopefully after a week, that's completely dried out, and then we should be able to see, hopefully, it fully working again. Then I can reuse it for another project. If you like this video, hit subscribe. There's plenty more projects coming and I'll see you in the next one.